Welcome back to another Q&A video. My name is Amy if you're brand new to this channel. Starting off with what I'm wearing, that's usually what I do. I am wearing my Balmain t-shirt and my LV initials necklace. Cloverleaf from Happiness Boutique. I love layering gold on gold. I'm wearing my beautiful Chanel earrings. Chanel little hair clip which I am obsessed. The first two questions are related by YSL Florida which number full do you like the most and recommend the most the world tour or the regular and then also by Oksana LV do you still like the never full world tour do you still prefer it with lots of stickers or would you limit them to just a few I have right here my never full world tour to show you this is the back side actually this is the front side if you're not sure about whether the style suits you then it's always best to go with the most classic one so that if you do regret your purchase or if you do find that the bag style doesn't suit you then you can more easily resell it because most people don't really want a bunch of stickers that they didn't choose by themselves so that's my first reason why I would choose a classic first in fact that's how I bought mine in that order, I bought my classic Neverfull in the monogram first in Vachetta leather and then this one came um, a couple years later. Now, I do love the world tour, don't get me wrong. I think that if you're pretty sure that you're not going to regret the purchase, then why don't you just go with the world tour because it's an amazing bag. Um, it's custom made to your liking with the choices of stickers that you put in and they're all made in French. France, which is a big bonus for a lot of us. I would say in general, I do recommend going with classic first. Now in terms of whether I would go with the maximum number of stickers versus limit a few, hands down, I would still go with the maximum. I think unless a placement of a sticker is in such a weird spot, for example, if it's on the bottom, you know, like I won't need a bottom sticker or like if it's a different style of bag and then that one particular sticker just is such an eyesore on where they put it, then you know, I would eliminate that one. But in general, I figured if I'm going to pay that much more money to get it custom made for me, I'm going to put all the stickers that I can. In fact, when I was making this bag, so this bag has the Shanghai Panda, the Pisa, um, Leaning Tower, LV logo, LV logo, and then my name here. And then on here, I have the Paris Eiffel Tower, LV logo, LV logo with a palm tree, and then another LV logo. I wanted more. I wanted other stickers that were really cute. But yeah, just to reiterate, I would choose the maximum number of stickers unless it's such an odd placement. Lighter idea, she asks, are you originally from Hong Kong? I always wondered if you spoke Cantonese. So I do speak Cantonese fluently, but I'm not originally from Hong Kong. I was actually born and raised here in Canada. I was actually born in Montreal and I lived pretty much most of my life there. Because I was born and raised in Montreal and because I was born in the 80s, then I uh, also by law had to study French. I think the laws was that unless you were born in the 1970s or prior and that uh, or that if your both your parents are at least one of them I think I, I wasn't quite like I'm not cl clear cut on the laws but I think at least one of your parents have to be officially educated in English then the children have no choice but to attend a French educational system so I attended primary school and secondary school in French, in entirely French, and that is also why I am trilingual. I learned Cantonese first, that's my mother tongue, and then I learned French, and then I learned English in post-secondary. I definitely speak way more English now because everybody around me speaks English here in Vancouver. Uh, no one speaks French here, so um, I, I haven't I haven't spoken French in a long, long time. It's not that I forgot or anything, but sometimes I do feel like it's quite rusty. Uh, you know, vocabulary is 
doesn't come as easily. I have to think about it. I also speak a little bit of Mandarin. Cantonese wise, I'm per perfectly fine. I mean, sometimes I do stumble, but that's only because, again, I don't speak it every day, but I do speak Cantonese way more here in Vancouver. It's actually more useful to know Chinese here in Vancouver. In reality, no one really speaks French here in Vancouver, so. Yeah, thank you for that question, but yeah, I definitely do speak Cantonese. Next question is by Jesslyn Chen. The Chanel 19 chains are chunky. Do you think you will like it? I remember that you mentioned in your earlier videos that the Chanel boy doesn't suit you. This chain here, even though it is chunky, it has leather intertwined in it, so it's a little bit more comfortable. It's less noisy and less clunky. It's still quite substantial, don't get me wrong. It's a solid chain, but... Um, it just feels a lot better in my opinion. Second of all, and more importantly, the boy bag, it has that loop where the chain can either double up or it can slide. This one doesn't slide at all. So the sliding alone is what drives me crazy. And I think drives a lot of people crazy too because the strap and like the leather brake can also slide through the, the loops, the D-rings and you keep on having to adjust it. And I think that that's just part of the design. I mean, you either like it or don't like it. And because it's so structured, it's like a box, it's not a comfortable protruding situation, if that makes sense. This one, even though I do wear it crossbody, I feel like because it's soft, it is more comfortable. Um, so it's debatable. Some people will not like the slouchiness of the 19 bag. Some people do. And some people don't like the boxiness of the boy and some people do. So next question is by Debbie H also related to the Chanel 19 bag. I purchased the 19 bag in the large size and wonder if I should keep it. In your opinion, which one would have more value in the resale market? Also, should I hold off and see if the medium comes up or embrace my large? I have 27 days to decide. I did mention that for this bag, I love it in all sizes. Personally, I feel like the larger sizes look so good on a taller lady and I know that you're 5'7", so I think it looks amazing on you whether medium or large. With the classic flap, I feel like the medium and the small tends to resell better. The jumble does really well too, but compared to the medium, the ratio of money that you get back compared to your actual retail price is less than what you would get back for the medium because it is more expensive to begin with. Now if you look at the Gabrielle, same story. The Gabrielle Large and Medium, they they actually resell for a lot, lot less than the retail price. And it's unfortunate, I think it's just the style itself as well. The Gabrielle is just not as popular as the classic flaps. Unless you're, you know, like you're a collector and you are a reseller or a consigner. Or you're buying for the sole purpose of um, reselling eventually for making money. Otherwise, you should just go with the one that suits you the best, you know, that suits your body frame the best, that suits your needs the best. I think for your own sake and for um, just just in case, I guess, do wait for the medium, even if it means not be able to get it this season, and even if it means losing a bit of money if the price increases, not losing a bit of money, but paying a little bit more if the price increases, that, that type of thing, you know. I think in the end, selling is so much more hard than to um, wait. You know, waiting seems like, you know, it seems like forever, which trust me, I, I hate waiting for Chanel releases because you know what's coming up, you're anticipating it, you want it, but if you can't get your hands on it, then you still have to keep on waiting, right? So I do understand that, but it's so much better than having to sell something that you don't end up loving or that doesn't suit you. I definitely don't think that the style is going to be dated because of the chain. In fact, I love this detail here. I really do. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, in the end, I cannot really predict what other people think, what the market will think. The next question is by Labyrinth Undisclosed. Hi Amy, I love your collection. Just curious, how many of your bags are pre-loved and are you really picky when it comes to brand new versus pre-loved? I am really picky. I think if uh, you watch my videos, you would find out that I am very detail-oriented. I like to look at details, I like to talk about details, and I like to know details. And the way I structure my videos and the way I sort of plan my videos, especially when it comes to reviews of a handbag, 
uh, and especially if there aren't that many reviews on a certain handbag then I try to provide more details more than you need to know almost sometimes because most people don't even look at the type of detail that I care about but I care about them so I talk about them so yes I am very picky if you haven't noticed and the reason is because it's just me <laughs> there's no reason I it's just in my nature to be detail oriented um, I also used to work in a field where I have to be super detail oriented I mean I still work in the field but I used to be uh, quality assurance for software so I have to find the bugs and in order to find bugs you need to be able to kind of break it apart and be as detailed as possible to find those bugs and to make those bugs happen so that you can fix them because if you can't find those bugs you can't fix them between pre-loved and brand new I definitely have a preference for brand new the only times where I would go for pre-loved is if I cannot find that style anymore and or if I can save a significant amount of money by going pre-loved so those are the only two pretty much the only two reasons why I would go pre-loved because my preference still is to go brand new because I want to be the first person to put the wear and tear in my bags and I want to be the first person to be able to appreciate the newness and all the details of a bag hey guys i'm back so the reason why i'm dressed like this is because i'm filming another video but i got more questions and i had already filmed a q a video which are you were watching earlier the holiday season is always a busier season for everyone i'm sure so i pre-filmed a lot of videos so um yeah i did my q a a while ago so i'm gonna add these two questions to it so the question is by jesslyn chan hi amy which one fits more, the Palm Springs Mini or the Gabrielle in the small size? And also, do you prefer the Gabrielle or the Chanel 19 bag more? I'm not sure if you've seen the video where I unboxed a brand new LV bag in place of the Palm Springs because mine had a defect and they took it back and they didn't have another Palm Springs for me. So uh, that's why I don't have it anymore. But I definitely can tell you that the Palm Springs Mini fits more than the Chanel Gabrielle small size not by a lot but the shape is so different right the shape of the palm springs it's taller um it fits a bottle this is a 500 millimeter bottle and then this is a 330 millimeter bottle so this is just over one cup of water and this is two cups so something like this i imagine you can put it in here because it's pretty short right and of course this, this will fit the uh, Palm Springs Mini yep it does fit so it does fit but um, the top of the bottle kind of protrudes so it kind of gives you an idea of what fits right so if I would close it it would look like this it takes up a, a third of the space right so it's not the most ideal thing to do you can do whatever you like but um, you know in a pinch you could always put it in and that's just a demonstration on how much it fits with the palm springs i have a feeling i'm pretty sure that this is the height of the palm springs i think you can put this in again it will take up you know a quarter or a third of the space in size but aside from that i still really like this size um i wouldn't really i wouldn't really need the medium size anyway because the medium size is really really large for me um, with this one, I feel that the size is just the perfect compactness for all my things to fit in there. Of course, you already know that I'm a big fan of the Palm Springs Mini, but since they didn't have a replacement, and actually they had a replacement, but I, I was not happy with the replacement that they had. It was a piece that looked not well made, um, and I'm very picky about that. I wouldn't just take it because it's there, just because it's available. So I declined it and so I no longer have one. I still wish that I have it because it was my grab and go everyday bag. And that one is literally so carefree. This is still carefree and pretty scuff resistant, but not nearly as much as the Palm Springs Mini. The Palm Springs Mini, I literally don't have to think about it. I don't really have any other bag like that that I can treat the same way as my Palm Springs Mini so um, yeah you guys know I'm a big fan of it in fact if 
if I could, I would get it back again. If I see another one, perhaps in a new design. Between the two, I think I would still go with the Gabrielle. I don't know, just by looking at it even right now, side by side, I just really love this. I think the chains on this is my favorite part of this bag. And I feel like this bag just goes with everything. It goes even with what I'm wearing today. Obviously a little bit more edgy than this pretty girly top, but I still would wear it. And the size of it is perfect. Um, easily accessible. The height of the bag is perfect when I'm wearing it like that on the shoulder. I can easily grab whatever I need inside. I'm sure a lot of you would agree with me that no bag is perfect. I don't think any bag is perfect. Every bag has something that is not as desirable but you can put up with. So with this bag, I almost feel like it's as perfect as is as it can be. I think the only reason why it's not as perfect is because it's not as sought after, it's not as classic looking. So therefore, um, if you were to resell it, you wouldn't get as much money probably because the resale market on the Gabrielles are not as great as the classic flat, for example, if you were to compare. But that's a mute point for me because I I don't really need to resell my, my Gabrielle because I love it. I love it so much that it's it's not even a thing for me and so aside from that everything else just is i don't know it screams amy right i i love the chains i love how it wears i love the size i love how the compactness is just the perfect configuration for me to put my things in uh, i love the subtle details and it's just an all-around perfect bag for me it's the perfect size it's slightly larger than the minis and it fits slightly more than the minis as well which to me is a big deal because i can work with minis but the gabrielle is like literally the mini size that is the perfect mini size for me it's the large enough mini size that works for almost all occasion whereas with this i like it a lot the 19 bag is still very fresh very new i wouldn't say that I like this more than the Gabrielle yet just because I haven't even had the chance to use it that much yet to know. I've traveled with the Gabrielle and when I travel with a bag, I can tell how much more I love it or how much more I hate it in a sense. Like I can definitely tell all the flaws and all the good things about it when I travel with a bag. So I haven't had the chance to do it with this bag yet. The least likable feature for me is probably this part of the strap so while i like having this leather break because it makes the bag more comfortable if i feel like this this particular one is just too hard because it's very stiff and the placement of it is so static so like if you wear it cross body for instance unless the bag is directly on your left side or on your right side where this piece sits right on your shoulder if you put it to the front then it's no longer on your shoulder or if you put it to the back then it sticks out to the front so the placement of this and also maybe the material the stiffness of this leather break is not ideal but like i said aside from that i'm a big fan of this bag regardless because i don't know i just really like the pillow effect of it and it's something different it's something that i don't have in my design in my handbag collection and I love a tri-color hardware um, the leather is very soft and really really beautiful so I'm really still really enjoying it it's just that I wouldn't choose this over the Gabrielle yet Meliki 2 Hi Amy, have you considered a comparison between the Chanel bucket bag and the Fendi Montrezor? Two of my favorite bucket bags here, one by Chanel, one by Fendi and they're totally different in my opinion I feel like the Fendi is a little bit more trendy because of its size and also because of its print but it still fits a lot and I love the fact that it's very structured for this one it can really, like things can really stand up easily similar to how I was talking about the Gabrielle where the configuration is the exact you know the exact height and is the exact sort of compactness that you need to just stand up everything and it's so easy to f to take things out and to put the put it back that's how I feel about this bag because 
it's just enough space for all my things to stand up perfectly and for me to find my things and it's very easy grab and go as well if it's on the crook of your arm there is a detachable longer strap that you can use i always wear it crossbody when i want it to be hands-free or i just leave it be and i just hold it by the top handle i think if i got it in the brown and the black color it would be more all year round but because of this color i feel like it's more summery for me just because i do wear a lot of dark color in the winter and it rains a lot here too whereas with this one so just a side by side you can tell the height is pretty much the same height right yeah so the height is very very similar pretty much the same um but the size you could already tell right away that the chanel is a little bit bigger this is double the price of the fendi montresors which which makes the fendi look so affordable uh which i think it is it's a very very good quality bag for what it is with chanel i feel like this looks way more timeless of course i chose it in the timeless very very neutral color this is the black caviar but aside from that even if it was in a different color i just feel like this just looks more classic more timeless um yeah. obviously you're paying a little bit more for it too but i just feel like this i can grab all year round and the size is also a little bit more universal i feel like most people don't carry the minimum amount of things that i do just the fact that i'm able to have a little bit more leeway with this is a nice thing so i think that's the main difference and the fact that it's chanel i mean everybody is coveting a chanel bag so um yeah for me that's the main difference i feel like this is more classic and a little bit more universal in size and this one is just a little bit more trendy but still really nice and i still really like it um both of them have a crossbody strap as well as a top handle which i really really enjoy in terms of the opening though i do feel that the montrezal is a little bit better because it's so wide open and then this strap you can easily just kind of rotate it um, whereas with this one it does get in the way a little bit one more thing about this bag is that because it is a working drawstring so you can really cinch it into like almost this opening which is very minimal then it's a little bit more secure whereas with this one the drawstring is not it's not that it's not functional but i don't cinch it in because this leather is very stiff so they have it in different uh, different leathers too so you don't have to choose this exact one but if you go with the ff logo one it's so stiff like it's so difficult to cinch it in that i don't even do it i just leave it be and plus i do like this cute sort of real bucket shape um so i just let it be i don't even cinch it in so that's the another difference between the two that um if this were to tip over and you didn't really have your things really really stuck and compact inside that they would tip over do you wear the palm strings palm springs backpack both crossbody and as a backpack i wanted to try to wear as a backpack but i could not remove this strap is it it is too stiff and i'm afraid i will spoil the leather when i did have the bag i did wear it i want to say two or three times as a backpack it's fun it's cute but it's not practical at all so i it's not my preference to wear as a backpack i would use a little sort of tool like that now this little tool does have teeth on here which is not good for leather or any sort of material that you don't want to damage so what i do is i wrap this piece of leather in the fabric and then i pinch it on the fabric then i remove it instead of using my nails or my fingers to push it in because sometimes that can be quite hard too especially on this one the palm strings is not too bad i just use the same thing and i push it back in you know of course wrap it around with a piece of cloth uh wrap it around a few times especially if it's a thin cloth but um having a tool like this is such a lifesaver they're really inexpensive i found this one at daiso so that is the end of this q a i hope that you guys found it helpful if you have any more questions for my next q a drop them down below and i'd be happy to answer them once i get enough of them in a brand new video and i guess that's it talk to you guys again very soon bye